Shalom, everyone. Everyone who would stand, we'll go ahead and open with prayer. Most holy and righteous Heavenly Father, Yahweh, great Father in heaven, this is Kohan Zephani Hawkins, seen servant of the last day's witness, our great faithful leader and teacher, the great Kohan Yeshua Hawkins, and through our great high priest, Yeshua Messiah, who's guiding and overseeing this work, Father Yahweh, making sure that everything is, uh, is done according to your righteous plan. We thank you, Father Yahweh, for another soon to begin, uh, soon to, to, to begin Sabbath day. We thank you, Father, for the, the opportunity to stand in our place and, and to serve one another, Father, and to take on this great character, Father, which uh, we're, we're, we should learn, Father, from uh, your Sabbath day, the, the, as we'll go over here this evening in this, in this sermon, that uh, it's the, 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 the top law of love, Father Yahweh, that we can learn. Uh, for showing love towards our brothers. And I do pray, Father Yahweh, that uh, you would open up our understanding, help us to understand all that Pastor is, is bringing out concerning the Sabbath day. We thank you for these messages, Father. They are inspiration to us. They are correction for us. And uh, they, give us, uh, they give us great hope, Father, and encouragement. We thank you for allowing us to be part of your house. We do pray, Father, you bless all those who, who are sick or afflicted and that uh, you continue to open the doors, Father, that uh, the message could reach all ends of the earth, Father, that the peace of solution would be accepted uh, in this world, Father, and that uh, they'd see it's the only way to, uh, to ever have peace, Father. And uh, without your laws, there is, there is no peace. And we, we thank you, Father, for all the prophecies that we see coming to pass. Uh, at this time, Father, and uh, we, we pray that you would allow us to, to see all the remaining prophecies, Father, be fulfilled. We do thank you and praise you, and we ask your guidance and direction here this evening, all through the authority of our High Priest, Yeshua Messiah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. <clears throat> Tonight we're on chapter 7 in the 10th book of Israel, part 2, Believe Until the One Sent. And the title of this sermon is Deception Number 20, The Foundation of Yahweh Will Never Change. The Foundation of Yahweh Will Never Change. Second Tamiah 2.19, Nevertheless, the foundation of Yahweh stands sure, having this seal, Yahweh knows those who are His, because everyone who reverences the name of Yahweh departs from iniquity. Second Tamiah 2.19. And this is on page 63, so if you have your books, uh, please open up and follow along. There's a lot of great, a lot of great things in this sermon, as as in all pastor sermons. What I found especially interesting is, you know, two points in this sermon that pastor just touched on last week in Sabbath services. You know, he speaks about here in this sermon uh, almost two years ago. You know, it was a year and you know nine months ago. So uh, these things in the sermon are very current, and and we can we can learn. From these things, and you know, it'll add to our understanding. Beginning in verse 1, Pastor says, Shalom, everyone. Praise Yahweh. I think this is going to work. Referring to the tables being set up in the sanctuary. And that, that may jog your memory as to how far this was when we first set up the tables here in the sanctuary. And, and now we have the, the great blessing to be able to have our, our books of Yahweh and notebooks and, and pens and pencils, highlighters, whatever we need to take notes and follow along with everything that that pastor is showing us so we can read it right there and and as we learn the mind gains double strength when we both see and hear the the message i hope you have your book of yahweh or something to take notes with everything is looking great right now everything is looking great in the world too i guess you've noticed i hope you're keeping up on the news and that's another blessing that we have to be able to see the the news, the, the, uh, which is actually the prophecy being fulfilled. You know, Bible prophecy being fulfilled. And, you know, all the, all the, the news, you see the, the great uprisings, um, all these Occupy movements. You know, nobody's satisfied with their leaders. But as uh, the great Kohan said last Sabbath, you know, the thing about it is they want uh, to change, but they, they don't necessarily know how to do it. You know, they need to come to the house of Yahweh, you know, listen to the one sent, follow Yahweh's laws, listen to what he tells them, and then they'll have the change that they all desire. But until they, until they start to do that, they're just going to be, these leaders will just be replaced with the same type of leaders that they had in there before. So they're not going to gain anything um, by the violence that's being, that's being demonstrated. If you turn over to page 64, verse 15 page 64 verse 15 we're going to pick up right here and pastor went over some of the the news the news articles at that time but verse 15 it says 
Now that's going on in the world. We know that it's coming to the end, as Yahweh shows. We know. I want to get back to into Revelation chapter 6 and the quartet. And I'm writing about it right now, but Yahweh willing, we'll be able to get back into it. Maybe by the feast anyway. If we hurry on this lesson, now this is one of the points that I, I want you to pay close attention to. If we hurry on this lesson that I want to start here today. So pastor's telling us he's going to start a new lesson here today. When this sermon was, was given, 9-4-2010. Uh, 9-4-2010. So I want to start here today, if we hurry on this lesson that I want to start on here today, and you will be, and, and you will be turning back to Genesis 1, if we hurry, I think we can finish this by feast. And let me start your thinking here. Okay, so he's wanting us to start, he's going to tell us here what he wants to start, us to start thinking on. I know that people think, you know, they read something and then they think they know all about it. And it, it doesn't work, it doesn't work that easily. People read the fourth commandment. Okay, what's the fourth commandment? Keep the Sabbath day, right? That's right, it's the Sabbath day. This great law that we're continuing right now, as Pastor told us, there's still things that we're learning about the Sabbath and, and that we're going to be doing. So people read the fourth commandment and they think, okay, they know it all, laughing. They have no idea what they're getting into or, you know, without, without lessons. If you think of Moshe, he was raised with somewhat of a biblical background, because he had the information written at Abel at his disposal. Now, you should be thinking of the parallel to, to how Pastor was raised, as he's told us how, you know, Bible reading was, uh, was, was, uh, was an everyday, in the evening activity for, for him and his, you know, for his family. And he said he's got, he had a lot of this training that came forth from the home. So Moshe was raised with somewhat of a biblical background, because he had the information written at Abel at his disposal. He had the information written by Abraham at his disposal. Abraham, and what did it say about Abraham? It said, well, Abraham kept my laws. He kept the statutes and the judgments. And that means he knew, okay, Abraham knew what the statutes were. He knew what the ordinances were. And he knew what the judgments were. You know, he knew these things. And this is very important because it's not just knowing 613 laws. It's knowing statutes, judgments, ordinances that govern those laws. And this is what pastors taught us how some have gotten off in the past because what about the ordinance of the Passover? They didn't, they didn't know these ordinances regarding the laws that they were you know, claiming to keep. But Abraham knew these things and it's very important. He didn't just know a bunch of laws, but he knew everything else that went with those laws to govern the laws. And that's very important. That's what we get, brothers, on the Sabbath day, coming here, listening to these sermons, going over these sermons. When we read pastor's words here, or listen to what he, you know, what he says via sermon, or however we get the information, satellite, we're learning these ordinances, the judgments, the statutes that govern the laws of Yahweh. And I think this, and I think this is where I've fallen short because I haven't pushed the statutes and the ordinances and the judgments like I should have. I have. I talk about them continually, uh, but I don't say, you know, this is a statute that's governing this law. I've never specifically pointed out those things each time I would mention them. The one thing that we can rest assured on this on is the foundation. We have the foundation of the prophets and the apostles, and then with Yeshua the chief cornerstone who is guiding his house, holding his house, holding his house, or guiding his donkeys in these last days, the donkey's colts, fastening them to the one sent. And he, he's the one, he's the one doing this. Okay, but if you, if you think now on what Pastor just went over, what he just told us here about, about you know, we, we need to understand these, the judgments and the statutes and these ordinances, and as we learn about the Sabbath day, pastor's showing us these things. He's showing us what it is that, that we, we yet need to see. And we're going to see as we, as we look over this sermon here, where pastor makes a comment here, he says, we look over the examples of Yeshua and the apostles, but we sometimes miss the point of what is actually taking place there. And this is the great blessing that we have of having a teacher 
to show us these things and explain them to us. Because, you know, we would miss it on our own unless Yahweh sent an inspired great teacher, Yeshua Hawkins, to teach us these things. Verse 18, of course Yeshua lost a lot of people. I mean, you can't teach a rebellious person. Sometimes you can. You think you're getting through to them, and then they turn again in rebellion because they can't give up, as Yeshua said, their feelings, their root of bitterness. As the apostles said, and so forth. They hang on to it, and it blocks the mind. Okay, the, the root of bitterness, roots of bitterness, block the mind. It's like marijuana. It cuts the mind off from learning. Okay, you, you shut the mind off. So a root of, a root of bitterness will do the same thing. It'll just stop the learning process. It'll just, you know, shut the mind off. And when the Hebrews were brought out of the land of Egypt, you know, they had, many of them had a rebellious attitude towards the leaders that Yahweh sent to them. That Yahweh gave them, you know, Yahweh gave them Moshe. But yet, they rejected Moshe many times. You know, Moshe went and while he was getting some training, they were down there, you know, worshiping the gods, uh, and as the you know, as the account goes, uh, bringing all their jewelry together, making a calf. But you know, Pastor explained that that was a lot more in depth, you know, than what that account w- would have us to believe. Okay, but they rejected whom Yahweh gave them to be a blessing to them. So they had this bitterness at times, and, and this is how they they stopped their mind from learning. And it started clouding their interest, and their interest their interest to become righteous. Okay, it stopped their interest to becoming righteous. Salvation is not hunting ways to make money. Salvation is overcoming. Salvation is overcoming. Now that, that's a great point there for us to keep in our mind. Salvation is overcoming. And as Yeshua said, what would you gain if you gain the whole world and you lose your life? What has this brought you? But the schools of higher learning now, they brought out this other stuff. And see, this is this is when when we get to this point to where we see, and and as Pastor's going to tell us here, if you turn the page in verse uh, 21 on page 66, how Pastor has taught us rather, that what really matters is the character we develop in this time period. That's really what matters, is the character that we develop. Our character must be, it must match the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program. But the whole thing, verse 21, page 66, verse 21, but the whole thing in salvation is to find that peace, the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program, to getting along, to tolerating each other, loving each other, Now, not just toleration, but love, of course. And if you don't practice these laws of love, which the Sabbath, now listen to this right here, which the Sabbath is the top law of love. The seventh-day Sabbath, that tops it all for teaching love to one another and learning to love one another as you sit here listening to me talk, as Pastor says. I hope I don't get you riled up too much that you can't enjoy, okay, as they say, you can't enjoy your dinner here. But if you notice that sa- the Sabbath day, it's the top law that teaches us love. And, you know, this, Yahweh willing, this is the, you know, the great things that, that we're going to see as pastor. You know, I'm excited when he said that, wow, you know, what, what is it that we're not doing it on the Sabbath day? What is it that we have to learn? You know, that's exciting to think that there's something else that, we still need to do. And, and you know, this is, this is uh, you know, I, I was pointing out something to a brother this week that I had saw in the prophetic word. I think it was the newsletter. In the newsletter, um, second to last page, about what pastor writes about the elect. And he says, you know, do you want to be part of the elect? And, you know, that's the first time that I had ever seen that referring to us as the elect, because we always have understood it as pastor was the elect, you know, not being able to be deceived. But we were included in that. And he says, you, you know, uh, referring to all those reading this, you can be part of the elect, those that would not be deceived. 
And I was showing the brother this, and you know, he said, "Wow, you know, Con, you've been in the house of Yahweh 26 years, and that, you know, that still excites you." You know, and it does. The the way Yahweh has designed this this whole thing here, we'll we'll never stop learning. We'll never stop having this great excitement that we get on the Sabbath day when we hear Pastor. It will always be such a tremendous joy to come and learn. And this is what Pastor has done for us on the Sabbath day. He he works to make the Sabbath day joyous for us. You know, I know I know that when he comes up here and speaks, you know, he's the greatest teacher in the world and he speaks so awesome and powerful and inspiring we think wow it just you know just comes right out just rolls right out you know he probably doesn't even need to to practice or you know but you see him there putting the effort forth in his studies and putting this all together to make it a blessing for us so that we're excited to hear him teach the laws of Yahweh so back to the the Sabbath day and this this great character now let's look uh, look down to verse 24 and that's the reason I wanted you to have your book of Yahweh so you can study this with me I'm going to go back to the Sabbath and show you what you've been missing here on the Sabbath day and show you how it's the top lesson for you the top lesson pastor says for you to love your brother as yourself and that's what you've got to do you know it's more what we need to realize is it's more than coming here standing in our standing in our place that's what develops this love for one another you know and if we're come on brother hurry up uh you know just choose a uh, uh, cinnamon bread or uh sabbath bread come on i got to go stand in my place brother i need to go serve would you hurry it up you know you're missing the point of coming to stand in your place on the Sabbath day. Oh man, look who's in front of me doing that confession. He's got so many sins. Look, I only have one sin to confess. Can I go ahead of you? I need to go get to my job. You know, you're missing the point of the love that we should develop for one another on the Sabbath day. So pastor teaches us here, he's going to show us what we're missing. And he's the only one that can show us what we're missing. There's nobody else that's going to show us what we're missing on a Sabbath day. Only pastor can. We're not seeking money or wealth or anything like that. We're seeking how to come out of the world and be separate, as Yahweh tells us to do. And this is a separation, you know, not only physically, but the, the character. You know, our character should stand out as we separate ourselves from the character that we see displayed in this world, as we practice the peaceful solution. You know, pastor goes on, as he, as he explains this, he'll explain it further, Yahweh willing we'll get to it, but he says, he goes over the, st- the steps on stop and think. And he said, first stop, and then think, think about it. And he said, that may take you a week or two. It may take you a week or two to think about it. But you see, he, he's teaching us, don't just react to something. You know, really watch your character. And this is what the Peaceful Solution teaches us to do. Stop and think. Think about it. You really want to do that? You really want to say that? Can't take it back once it's out of your wor- you know, once the words are out of your mouth. Can't shove it back in there. So this is what the Peaceful Solution teaches us to do. We're seeking how to love one another as ourselves we're seeking how to love one another as ourselves, one another. And Yeshua showed that that's from the, that's from the greatest, what we, what we consider the greatest, which is yourself, right? Even to the least. Yes, love yourself too, but you've got to love the least, which is me. As much as yourself, or maybe more, in order to get this rock that you've got to climb over here, which is pride and hypocrisy, a false attitude, a false mouth, gossip, and so forth. And as, as we'll see here with Moshe, Moshe, he needed training. And Yahweh made sure that he got that training. And we need training. And Yahweh's making sure that we get this training. And when he was finished with Moshe, Moshe was so humble, he said, Yahweh, I, I really can't do this anymore. 
You know, I don't think I can do this. I can't, I can't do this. You need to pick somebody else. And he always says, well, tell you what. How about I'll do the work and I'll give you the credit. <laughs> and Moshe says, okay, you know, that'll work. I, I, you know, and I'm sure there was a lot more to it, of course. But Moshe was very humble. He humbled himself. And humility is a, is a, is a trait that we must have. It, it must be there. Pride, pride will just cut us off. It'll cut that learning off. But humility, after Moshe was, was taught and trained, he had that great humility. And then Yahweh said, okay, now I can use you. In verse 29, if you look down here to verse 29, what Pastor just explained here in these, in these uh, last couple of verses, he's talking about how um, the scientists had said that Mars got very close to the earth. Okay, and the last time this had taken place, uh, we were going to go to some four nations and we were going to be teaching the peaceful solution there. And then all of a once the war started. And he was explaining how, you know, Mars with the, with the war god, uh, Mars being a war god, you know, he was relating the two. And he says here, and the minister's education had it all set up, what we were going to do. Uh, and then Mars came close to the earth and the war was started in Afghanistan, which shut down our plans. Well, verse 29, it wasn't in Yahweh's plan or it wouldn't have been shut down. And I can see why now. If it had been spread too soon, and this is, remember I mentioned there's two points here that I thought were very, very, very interesting to what Pastor just related to us last Sabbath. This is the second one. The first one was the, I'm going to start the lesson on the Sabbath day. But the, the second one is right here. He said, because if this had spread too soon, then the times of the Gentiles. Now he just told us about the times of the heathen. Those that, that don't know Yahweh. The strangers, the strange nations. I'm not saying now that these are another race. They're just heathen, like everybody, until they come to the house of Yahweh. But these times of these heathen and their activities would not be fulfilled so Yahweh could not prove the point that he wants to prove. You know, so we see a clue there in what Pastor taught us that that, that time of the heathen, you know, there's a certain proving there that they must see that their way isn't working. You know, that their way is not ever going to bring peace. In the world, he's proving a point that you can't live without his laws and live in peace. Now, in the house of Yahweh, he's proving a point that you can live in peace using the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program. That's what he's proving here, if you will apply it. If you don't apply it, if you don't apply the Peaceful Solution, if you don't learn it and apply it in your life, it won't work for you. It won't work for us. If we refuse it, if we reject it, it's not going to work. It didn't work for Cain, and he had it. Yahweh taught it to him. But it worked for Abel. It worked for Abel. And it worked for Abel's followers, and that's what Moshe took with him. Of course, the background that he had, you know, he had to bring Moshe back to the house of Yahweh and teach him for like 30 years to ever get this into his being, into his character. Same thing that Yahweh is doing with us, getting it into our character. The Sabbath day, the top law of love that teaches us to love our brother. So it's not an easy thing. You can't just read, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And it's the seventh day of the week. And know everything about the Sabbath. It's much more difficult than that to get, it in, get, it, get to the bottom of it. You can learn. You can learn to partially keep the law. But you've got to be brought as Moshe was to the burning bush. You know, the great burning bush of the house Yahweh, that eternal flame that just never goes out. Like the menorah there, lighting the way, you know, always lighting the way with the laws of Yahweh for us, forever guiding us, you know, the, the, the continual burning of the house of Yahweh and the wisdom and knowledge that comes forth from, from, from His servant. And it's always on fire with Holy Spirit, with Spirit Holy of Yahweh. The Spirit Holy of Yahweh, always on fire with it. A fiery, a fiery tongue, a fiery two-edged sword, that's what the house of Yahweh is, and to teach him this. Well, when Yahweh got through with Moshe, finally he was a very humble man. So humble that he didn't even think he could do the job. Pride wasn't there. 
but he finally saw how difficult this job was that he was going to have to do, and he said, there's no way I can do it. And Yahweh said, yes, there is. You know, I'll give you the credit, and I'll do the work. How will that be? Well, I thought about that the other day, and I said we need to make some signs. And in fact, I think we still have that sign. Um, well, it was uh, right back there. But we had signs to, to this effect. And, you know, now we have a sign right here to look at uh, uh, in, in, our, in our Book of Israel, reminding us of this very thing. So, so Yahweh was training Moshe all along here. And uh, if you look down a little bit here, after you become converted and Yahweh brings in the crowds, you will see what I've put up with for over 40 years in the wilderness, trying to bring you about to the Peaceful Solution Character Education pro Program. Every move that Moshe made, he got opposition. Well, that's not of Yahweh. I'm not going to do that. That's not of Yahweh. I'm not going to guard the house of Yahweh. Surely that's not of Yahweh. Well, I, I think, well, how much do they need? You know, where do I start to get the needs? I can't, I can't repeat the whole history of what took place with Israel to let you know that. You know, yes, they did. They did thousands of different things to guard Yahweh's house. Had they not it would have been destroyed as Yahweh shows the many different things that He did to guard it. And we see the same thing. And even though we stand in our place to guard the house of Yahweh, we know that if it wasn't for Yahweh guarding the house of Yahweh, we, we would have no power. As was with Moshe, Yahweh does the work, we get the credit. You know, how merciful is that? But these things come out of the mouth without being, without, uh, without being, you know, thought about. And that's what the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program teaches. First, think. Our first thing it does is to teach you stop, stop. Take time to think. Now, this might take a week or two weeks, but don't let your mouth overload, you know, watch your language. Watch what you say. You don't have to say things right now, even if you think them. Go back and think it over. Okay, and Pastor says, you know, go back and think it over. Take the time to think about it. And you're going to see that a lot of times you're, you're going to change what, what it was that, 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 you would, that you would have said. And if you turn the page here, <clears throat> Pastor says, maybe you won't be making so many mistakes up here and you're, and you're, uh, you're, that you're going to be judged for. Yeshua told you you're going to be judged by them stupid words that come out of your mouth and you'll be condemned by them unless you repent. When you come to the house Yahweh... Watch your foot. Watch your mouth. You know, remember when Pastor gave us that lesson? You know, he says, come. Come, come, to, come to services. Be on time. Don't show Yahweh how rude you can be by being late. Come on time. Find your seat. You know, Shalom, how are you? Well, that's few words enough. Remember when he taught us those lessons? You know, get ready to learn. Get ready to take notes. Sit at the table. Open up your book of Yahweh. Open up your notebook. And, and be ready. This is what it's about. Verse 36, well, here now we see that Yahweh allowed this. I was going to tell you about Mars 800 years ago. Think about this. 800 years, 800 years ago, I said, what, were, what, were, what, was taking place, what was taking place 800 years ago? That would have been 1210. 1210. The Crusades were at their highest rate right then, and that was when Mars was almost as close as it was this time. You know, so Mars being the war god, Pastor showing us here that same time ago is when these crusades were, were taking place. I believe, or 823 years, or let me see, I skipped something here. The crusades were at their highest rate right then, and that was when Mars was almost as close as it was at this time. It got closer this time than it did 829 years, I believe, or 823 years ago. But the crusades were horrible. They were trying to kill off all the believers. The popes were trying to kill off all the believers who kept transferring the word from mouth to mouth that Yeshua had come. Okay, so here's the message going forth from mouth to mouth. He's teaching the laws of Yahweh. 
And this is what they were spreading. He's teaching the laws of Yahweh. He's teaching how to keep the Sabbath correctly. And many people were following his example. And from what the apostles taught them, because a lot of what is taught by the apostles, that we're not grasping. We read over like a story, but we're not grasping what they say. You know, and as we think about the, the Sabbath day and what Pastor is teaching us, what he's building up to, if you have time, go back and read these examples. You know, read these examples about the apostles and, and, and how Yeshua taught them to, to keep the Sabbath day and what they did. And, and of course, you know, it, it's going to take pastor to, to show us what we're missing. You know, he's going to explain us just like he, he gave us the name Nora. You know, uh, as he, but yet he said, I want all you to be studying this. You know, I want you all to look at it. I don't think any of you are going to get it. You know, Yeshua has to open the door, but go ahead and study it. You know, and all that effort, it's recorded on our behalf. The obedience is recorded on our behalf. You know, the, the, uh, it benefits us as we, as we put our hand forth and we, and we study and we, we do the things that, that Pastor tells us to do. But as we look at the Sabbath here, you know, Pastor's telling us those examples. We're not grasping everything um, in those examples. And in conclusion here, if you look down to, look down to verse 42, and, you know, this, this shows us, as we talked about the prophecies and the news articles and how everything, all the prophecy is coming to pass exactly as prophesied. It, it always has been. And you see in verse 32 how Pastor talks about all of these things that were invented in his lifetime. And, you know, the, the, how the knowledge has been increased and, you know, both the knowledge for Yahweh's people, but the technical knowledge, the, you know, the, the technical knowledge, the development of the nuclear weapons, you know, all this brought forth Pastor says here on the bottom of verse 42 here, he says, All of that was developed in my lifetime to where we have means to do exactly what is broadcast and, or, and what is forecast by the prophets of the horror that is going to take place here that you couldn't imagine back then. And remember, Pastor, even, um, he even mentions, um, I think this is what, where the, what the next Gahan will, uh, will get into, but how even at that very young age when he was trained by his parents, he was questioning how the earth could burn. Remember, how could the whole earth burn? And, you know, he was being taught the scriptures at home. So, if everyone to please stand. At this time, I'd like to turn it over to the great Kohan, Betsail Hawkins. Shalom, everyone. You may be seated. We're going to continue here on this lesson on page 69 with uh, verse 44. <clears throat> this uh, creation <clears throat> event is nothing new to Yahweh. He's uh, an excellent planner. Uh, he plans things out before he takes action. <clears throat> and he gives his creation opportunity to live a peaceful life. And uh, they continue to uh, use their free will to make wrong choices if they don't choose to, to apply his teachings, and they end up going the wrong way. And this is what occurred in the beginning when he was preparing uh, for mankind to place mankind on the earth. The earth had come to this darkness and destruction. And he shows how the earth became darkness, and which means much evil and much deception. And this is what we see in these last days, is this deception uh, creeping in uh, continually. And what this was, was the consequences of sin. Now we're familiar with that, that term con, you know, it means to, to cheat or to uh, oppose or, to, you know, it's a, it's a negative thing. And then sequences, it's a sequence of events. One thing, one, it's like a snowball effect. One thing leads to the next. And this is no surprise to Yahweh. He knew this. This didn't catch him off guard or catch him by surprise. But Yahweh knows what it takes to bring an individual who has freedom of choice, free will. He knows what it takes to bring them 
to the point where they will choose righteousness. And it's quite a process. And we see this plan in Genesis 1 beginning, a plan that Yahweh has here that he reveals to us, and this is in the beginning of his plan for mankind uh, when he placed us here and started working with us, teaching us. It's something we need to bear in mind that our present suffering is secondary to what will be. Sometimes we think that what we're going through is the, the most important thing that's going on. We tend to think that uh, that deserves all the attention. You know, whatever particular issue that we're dealing with, whatever is uh, inconveniencing us or paining us or, or what, uh, so forth. You know, what if that began in the beginning? You know, what if Adam said, oh, I'm having trouble with that, Cain. You know, I just had enough of this. Let's just stop the plan right now. I've had enough. Okay? That doesn't make sense, does it? Well, no more should we do that at this, in this time period. It's a, much, it's a long-range plan, and it goes far beyond us. Actually, we're towards the end of it, so we got the better end of the deal, I think. Genesis means the beginning. In verse 26, Yahweh shows his plan to make man in his image, and to make man in his image after his likeness. That's his plan. In Yachin on 1, verse 1, we just read that last uh, Sabbath, I believe, in the beginning was the plan of Yahweh, which is before any of us and any of you, before me. And this plan is hidden from the world. It's not easily discerned. Otherwise, everybody would know it, right? But it's explained through the one that Yahweh sends and inspires to teach in that particular time period. And we have one prophesied in these last days for this time period. So this is how Yahweh is going to do this. This plan was with Yahweh, and it was Yahweh's plan. And the same plan was in the beginning with Yahweh. So there's your quality assurance uh, contract there with the plan of Yahweh. All things were done according to it, according to this plan, and without it nothing was done that was done. So none of this took place, nothing that was allowed to occur was, take, was allowed to take place without Yahweh's permission. Now further in Deuteronomy 12, verse 3, we're given a, a command or an instruction here. And how should we interpret this plan? This is where you can get in trouble if you just take one scripture and try to run with it. You must destroy their altars, break down their sacred pillars. Now look, not even the, the military does things like this, okay? If you sign up for the military, what's the first thing they do? They put a gun in your hand and say, okay, go kill? No. They send you to basic training, and you train, train, train. To what? Grab up a gun, go shoot, shoot, shoot? No. To follow instructions. Now, some of you have been to war, and I've read the accounts, and I know that when you go into a war zone, you just don't run out there, everybody doing what seems right in their own eyes, and just shooting willy-nilly everywhere, and every, you know, it it's, uh, becomes mass confusion, and everybody, your buddy gets killed, and everybody dies. So there's a plan they follow, and they follow instructions, and they don't always agree with it. But my point is, even in the world, without the knowledge, instruction, and training that we're receiving, they know better than to go out on their own. So what does this mean? To destroy the altar, break down the fillers. Well, it's not for us to do right now with force, but it's for us to do in this time period in revealing the man of sin with words, as Yahshua did with words. You see, it has to be through teaching and instruction, not through force and aggression and all that foolishness. It never has worked. It never will work. But it's done through revealing and exposing the deception so the people go, oh, now I get it. And then they choose the right way. That's how you really make it stick. He's speaking to a people. He's calling and telling them to go and train for this job. So you see 
How you do this comes with instruction. And where do we receive that instruction? It comes to us continually, weekly, here on Yahweh's Sabbath. And, and of course, we get it through the week with the, the sermons, tapes, everything we review, our notes. All of this comes together to serve this purpose, to train for this job. You must not worship, and you remember that word worship means service. You must not worship or serve Yahweh your Father in such ways. Yahweh your Father is not a God. This is instruction. He didn't just whip up a bolt of lightning and pow, say enough of that. No, he, he says, look, this is the way, walk you in it. And this is what's going to be the, the sequence of events if you go this way. But there's also a way here that you must go if you desire peace and safety with your neighbor and, and so forth. So he continues with the instruction. We must uh, bring your burnt offerings, which, well, how do you apply that? If, if we don't, you know, bring sacrifices, and burnt offering and altar... Well, that's with the further instruction has come forth from the house already in our, in our, back in our training, understanding that this is with that, that zeal and that determination and the listening, paying attention, staying awake in services, all these things, and sacrifices, your acts of service, uh, your willingness, all of this goes together. You see, you're building an attitude of cooperation here. And... There in front of Yahweh, your father, you and your family shall eat, and you shall rejoice. Well, what, is, what impairments are there to rejoicing? In, in my experience, what I've seen with myself and I've seen in others too, is, is not getting what you want. Not getting things your way the way you want them. That's one of the impairments. So we have to learn how to do this. This isn't something that comes naturally. It's not just a mental excitement, but it's a satisfaction in being a blessing to others and helping them please Yahweh. So it's, it's your actions. It, it's th- putting into practice these things that you're learning. And then, of course, continuing that through the week. Uh, there was an expression I heard from the world uh, never let a great crisis, you know, go to waste. And uh, the Catholic Church has been around a long time. Once again, that Catholic, I can put that in quotation marks because that's, a, that's a, big, a lot of meaning behind that. What does it mean to be Catholic? Okay. Uh, a long history here. And they saw that there was an energy uh, that they created when they took man out of reality. And they put them into these carnivals and fairs and things like this. And I looked up some definitions. The fairs were sales and trade on Catholic feast days. And the carnival, which is pretty closely related, uh, is something that was to be before Lent. And it means uh, roughly to remove meat because they couldn't have meat during Lent. And so, once again, it's a Catholic, you know, it's related to Catholic observance. But you see, it's what you're taught that becomes normal or acceptable. It may seem strange to, to us or to you, but it's what you're taught that becomes normal or acceptable. And this is the same in every culture. But Yahweh calls us out. He opens our mind and gives us an opportunity to choose our teacher here. Because none of this of the world has ever brought true joy. So here on the Sabbath day, this is where it starts, learning to rejoice. Now, here you must not do, at all do, as you're doing here this day. This is, um, was instruction here in verse 8, Deuteronomy 12. Every man doing whatever is right in his own eyes. In Yachanan 1.3, Yahweh is allowing his plan for the whole world to do what is right in their own eyes, but he doesn't allow this for you if you desire to receive the results that he promises you. Well, I got rights. No, you don't. You got it all wrong. That's the problem, you see. You got to come back and get proper instruction. The very first step to rejoicing is going before Yahweh to learn. 
learning to rejoice. Yachanan 1.3, all things were done according to it. Remember, Yahweh is allowing, and it, it, this plan didn't begin with you, and it's not going to end with you, but you can be a part of it. The way of, of Satan's world doesn't bring satisfaction. Now, this is the plan. So we see the plan now coincides with 126 in uh, Genesis 126. I'll make man in my image. Remember, it wasn't instantaneous, but it's a process. And this is what he's doing now. He's doing it here and he's showing us that he's allowing these things to take place for a purpose. The wars, the, the destruction, violence, everything that we see in this time period. And he's allowing everything to take place for this purpose, for making you into his image. Now the prophets and the history of the king show us the mistakes that they made that we don't want to make. And what the results were. And we're going to see this in these last days, as it shows us in Thessalonians, where it says that they'll think they'll have peace, but then comes the sudden destruction. In other words, when they su think they've sufficiently beat down their enemies with force, then sudden destruction is going to erupt. And it's going to bring that destruction to four-fifths of the total population to the earth, of the earth. But out of that, you're going to see that two billion in the quartet uh, turn and repent and finally see the error of their ways. But re remember, it's going to be their choice, their choosing. Now, we've got a lot of pulls on us in these last days, a lot of temptations, and a lot of that comes through to commercialization, um, through influences. Uh, one that came up this week was Mother's Day. And I didn't know a lot about it. I looked up some things on it, and I thought it was really interesting that the woman who got this started, she stood up and she said to other women who, you know, however she communicated at that time, we need to stop sending our sons to these wars that are started by, you know, irrelevant people uh, to kill the sons of other mothers. And she said it more eloquently, of course, and we need to stop accepting our husbands coming home with the stench of war. You see, so she had a great idea. It's like the great con before me, great con Zephania pointed out at the beginning of his lesson there. You know, they, they're, they're lacking some of the pieces. They, they desire the piece, but they don't quite know how. So she started off great. Well, then she died, and her daughter kind of picked up and decided to have a day to commemorate uh, this uh, to, to kind of get the attention to the whole idea to try to achieve peace and lo and behold these characters got a hold of this because they saw that people were observing this and uh, they started selling flowers and the flower business boomed you know it's like that turkey day and uh, they saw a profit in it and she's, she went out she said no 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 you know she protested she says no I don't want to I don't want this commercialization and they arrested her so get out of here. We're making money on this, you know. And they, and they instituted it Mother's Day, you know, from there on out. And that's the way that things go of this world. It's, it's not a, a commandment of Yahweh. And Yahweh's shown us the way to peace. But it's a process. It's not a quick thing where you just run out and say, okay, I'm going to, you know, whip things in order here and we're going to have peace by tomorrow. It doesn't work like that. That would be just selfishness. So, these temptations, uh, the things we fall into, the, the, the disease, the, the war, destruction, everything, this whole ball of wax that's uh, accumulated in these last days, um, that's what we're facing today. And, and, of course, we come here, we have diseases, we've got this stuff we're trying to get rid of in our bodies. And, of course, uh, the, we're being judged on how we submit to Yahweh's instruction to overcoming the sins in our, in our thinking, our attitudes, and our eating, our behavior, everything that led to that in the first place. And this is how we're going, uh, we're overcoming the world and everything that's come along and we brought along with us. This is how we're overcoming it. And we're being judged for the effort we put forth in, in following the instruction and doing what Yahweh has given us to do to overcome these things. Certainly, 
We're not given all knowledge and all instruction at this time to be able to overcome every obstacle, but there's even a purpose in that. You know, I personally have, have experienced great blessings in suffering hardship and suffering, you know, without having, uh, you know, suffering in need and all the things we see the apostles talking about. You know, it kind of stirs up your mind to be more resourceful and you can really rejoice, you know, when you find the answer to a pressing issue or problem, when you find out the answer is far more simple than anything this world provided that I might have otherwise looked to. So, uh, in verse 19, uh, Ephesians, let's see. Well, I know he's in Ephesians 2. may have to look back, see where he's at. But verse 62, Therefore now you are no longer heathen. We're not going to be that way anymore, okay? We're, we're converting, we're changing. <clears throat> because those who remain in that way, they cut themselves off from Yahweh. Because some say, whoa, I don't want to change this or that part, you know, and then the rebellion starts up again. And the whole world is arguing in their rebellion at this time. You're no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints, built on the foundation of the prophets and the apostles. If we're not in unity with this house, we're not a part of of the work. If you're not a part of this work, you're a part. That A, it's like you have symmetrical and then you have asymmetrical. Okay, not the same. You have part, okay, part, and then you have a part. And that A, that little letter A, means not or opposed to. So if you're not part of the work, you're opposed to the work. There's no in between. How many people go through life you know, really thinking in a way of seeking what pleases them? Okay, I'm guilty of it. You know, it's like a, it's like a mental disease, you know. It's just like every time I turn around, why am I doing that? Well, I'm just trying to find my own, get my own way, you know, seeking my own way. What about Yahweh's way? Did you drink Yahweh's way this week? <laughs> There's a blessing in it for you. Drinking it's more than, okay, it's taking it in. To your, letting it become a whole part of your life, like Yahshua. And him who is Yahshua, you are also being built together to become the house of Yahweh through the Spirit. Yachanan 6, 63, it is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The laws that I speak to you, they are spirit. The spirit that Yahweh wants in his people, building you to where you find joy and you're not bickering and being miserable. The laws that I speak to you, they are spirit. They are life everlasting. So it's obedience and unity is laws that results in peace. In 2 Tamiah 2, in verse 19, Nevertheless, the foundation of Yahweh... So this foundation of Yahweh, if you look back to um, the title of this sermon, <clears throat> the foundation of Yahweh will never change. I have a picture I drew here of a lighthouse. You know what a lighthouse looks like, lighthouse on the rocks? Where do they put a lighthouse? They put it on solid rock, a solid foundation. Now, this foundation that we're talking about, it's not the concrete floor we're sitting on. It's not the found, uh, you know, a physical thing. The foundation of Yahweh, of Yahweh is not the concrete building that it stands on. So with that understanding, okay, I'm, we're going to understand something. We're going to take this a little further. But think about this lighthouse as an analogy and think about the light coming from it. You've got a ship on the sea. We're like the ship on the sea getting tossed in, about in the storms. And this light's coming forth, bringing to you the light of salvation here at the house of Yahweh. Now, no matter what occurs out there on the seas, whatever storms come, whichever way that ship turns, you know, if the, if the rudder gets broken or whatever... If you look and can see that light coming from Yahweh's house, 
is always going to be in that same spot. It's not going to move. It's not going to waver. And if you keep your attention fixed on that, you're not going to go wrong. That's your, remember the quality assurance plan? It's Yahweh's plan. The foundation of Yahweh will never change. That's how firm that foundation is. Now, no one's ever going to change that. Not the whim of man or religion. Nothing ever will change it. The foundation of Yahweh stands sure. Sure means steadfast and forever. Having this seal. And remember the seal that the disciples had with the laws, sealed with the laws and the prophecies. So this, the foundation, this is how you achieve it. All who reverences the name of Yahweh, which is the authority of Yahweh, departs from iniquity. Iniquity is doing away with Yahweh's laws. It's rebellion, pushing it aside and not to follow it, meaning that you knew it, but then you rebelled against it. Okay, that's not the way. Second Yachanan, in verse 4, I, re I greatly rejoice. Let's see. Okay. Yes, Second Yachanan, verse 4. I greatly rejoice that I found some of your children walking in the truth according to the laws. The laws, that there are no new laws. These are laws that were wrote... Uh, from the beginning, that we love one another. I'm in verse 80. And thinking uh, on this word love, this is what fastens us together. Not the false love we see advertised on television, but the love we see in keeping Yahweh's laws. That's what fastens us together. <clears throat> And this is love, Second Yachanan 6, that we walk after his laws. Those are the laws that you have heard from the beginning. And remember, that's where we started, in the beginning. And, of course, the King James Version, um, you can read here how this was mistranslated. Uh, we're changing a couple of words. And this is why we have so much confusion in the world today with people that take their uh, their book, their um, King James Version or, you know, whatever Bible they have, they take it, they read it themselves and try to find salvation that way, and it can't be done. It wasn't designed that way, okay? Remember I said it's hidden, it's not apparent, uh, just to casual, casual observation. And remember, the one prophesied in these, for these last days as our teacher is of, of quick understanding. That's a gift from Yahweh, okay? So it, it's not something you'd gain on your own. That's just being prideful. It's just, you know, it's basic laziness, you know. It's really, it's human nature. Uh, we all have it. It's nothing new. It's no surprise. But we must overcome it. This is the foundation of the apostles saying, you've got to walk in these, for many deceivers have gone out teaching uh, that you shouldn't walk in these ways. You see, it's always in opposition because they want to do something else. So it's the performing of this law that produces the results, the service, the trust, the cooperation, the satisfaction, the peace of mind, all the things that we desire in our life. Verse 93, uh, verse 10, we're still here in uh, Isaiah, Isaiah 24. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this doctrine, don't go after your own thoughts here, brethren, every man doing what seems right or what is right in his own eyes. See, they want you to continue or believe something that's opposing the plan. 
If anyone comes to you and does not bring this doctrine, do not accept him into the house of Yahweh there, nor welcome him. Otherwise, you're as guilty as he is. Don't go along with the evildoers. Shut your mouth. In other words, you know, remember he said when you let it out, you can't take it back? So stop and think before you let it out. You know, sometimes by speaking out, uh, you know, you think you're going to give somebody the what for, you know? It, it doesn't help, it doesn't change your mind, because if they're not willing to listen, to receive instruction, then they won't be able to make that free choice. So it's kind of a waste of time. And if you, you know, if you let your self-control go, like I've done at times, you know, and it hasn't helped, it doesn't change, it sometimes makes the situation worse, and it, it doesn't really help the other person. You know, it, you may think it helps you for the moment, getting something off your chest, but you don't really, really look at it. So praise Yahweh for confessions and, and learning. That's what we come here for, to learn and to grow, right? Praise Yahweh. So, Yahweh's established his house for us in these last days, and this is how and he's bringing us to salvation. Going our own way isn't going to do it. Those that are Yahweh's, that is, not independent, opinionated individuals, but those who are taught and trained individuals, tried and true and tested in unity with Yahweh, including Yahshua, Israel, the prophets, the apostles, the whole body of believers that are in unity. Okay, this is what we're looking for. This is the standard that we're attaining to. As we see on the end of page 73, the conclusion of this lesson, we see the donkey tied to the branch uh, in humble submission. I hope you get an opportunity to watch those donkeys out there in the field that we have here, uh, watch their, their character, their nature. And it's, uh, it's really uh, amazing what Yahweh's put. You know, everybody has animals know they all have a kind of a personality, you know. Don't, don't go after your own thoughts here, brethren. Every man doing what is right in his own eyes. Go to the house and let Yahshua tie you to the branch. I'm not trying to lead you wrong. I'm going to lead, I'm not, I'm not going to lose my reward. See, it wouldn't be worth it for him. Yahweh says, I'm not going to lose it. See, he, even pastor's got that quality assurance. Okay. And he's not going to blow it. Praise Yahweh. Well, may Yahweh bless your understanding. It's been a joy to uh, stand with you here. And if you please stand, we'll rejoice and give thanks to Yahweh. Our great and awesome Father, whose name alone is Yahweh, this is Kohan Betsiel Hawkins, along with all the men of your house coming before you as the seeds of the last day's witness, Israel Hawkins, and through the high priest over your house, Yahshua Messiah, in the last day's work of the house of Yahweh, under the witness Israel, being taught, trained, and instructed in your laws, to apply them in our lives, to prove it as a blessing to ourselves and others, and learning to be teachers of your great peaceful solution. We pray for your blessings. We pray for your forgiveness, Father. We pray for your help in overcoming, that you would bring us to unity before this great fe uh, feast of weeks coming up next week <clears throat> as we continue uh, to set our desire and our heart upon you, your kingdom, uh, your rejoicing, Father, learning to be as you are in your character and as Yahshua was in his example and being a servant to others, not being impatient, not being self-serving, but uh, being patient and uh, long-suffering and uh, waiting on your great plan to come to fulfillment, Father, because we know that uh, in your plan is wisdom and knowledge, great instruction, and uh, all the qualities it takes to endure forever uh, throughout all eternity uh, in eternal life. We do thank you and praise you in all things through and by the authority of Yahshua Messiah, guided by Spirit Holy, we pray. Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh.